Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So good morning. Today is Monday, March 27th, 2023. It is 9.01 a.m. Eastern, and I'm happy to be back. It's, it looks like it's a beautiful day. It's so bright and sunny in, um, outside. I don't know what the temperature is, but, you know, it's probably chilly. But it looks it's like a gorgeous day out. So I pray everyone had a wonderful weekend. I had a okay weekend. Thanks for asking. Um, you know, I was able to get a few things done. So I, I was um, fairly productive. I could have gotten a few more things done to my liking, but um, I did make some progress. So I won't beat myself up for that. So it's a beautiful Monday morning. Let me just show everybody my beautiful flowers. Instagram, unfortunately, because... Um, it doesn't allow you to record in landscape mode. You don't get to see my beautiful flowers every day that I keep on my desk. But my flowers that I bought last week, <clears throat> excuse me, are ac absolutely stunning. You just get to see like a little bit that I can keep on this side to try to get in the frame. But anyway, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram once again. So what are we doing today, Allison? Today we are up to Daniel chapter 8, and we're focusing again more on the dream or the vision that Daniel had. I'm going to stick with the Amplified translation, honestly, because what we're reading, the Amplified adds the extra information that at least I need, and maybe you all need it too. But So we'll stick with the Amplified translation. I don't even know, um, and not today, I don't even know for some of this if it's going to even add anything to go to the different translations. I'm really looking for as much information as possible. So I spent a good part of my evening yesterday watching a teaching on the book of Daniel, really trying to study and just even, you know, as I'm watching other people teach about it, taking my own notes from other teachings and then listening to it on the audio Bible as well and then sitting down and reading it myself. I really want a good handle on this so that when we finally get into the book of Revelation, all of the dots will start to connect for me. And again, the goal is too for doing this is to be able to kind of get an overall idea of where we are in current times with regard to the book of Revelation. All right, so we're going to pray today. I think I'm going to pray from our let there be prayers. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wasn't really sure what I wanted, wanted what I wanted to pray today, but when I opened up all of my various prayers, this is the one that kind of caught my eye. And I'll say this, I wrote myself a note that I really wanted to make an effort to start to pray for men mental illness and praying against the um, spirit of suicide again. I heard another story of a young child, again, elementary school age, who either attempted suicide or had made threats of, of committing suicide. And I'm just floored because you know, elementary school. So something is going on. So we just have to be on, on our prayer post and to really pray about that prayer. You know, and, and really we can include that as part of our praying for the children, right? We want to lift up the children, not just academically, but clearly there's something going on. So um, we're going to do that. So let's get into our Let There Be Prayers. That'll be our theme for today. And then we'll jump right into the word. And then I'm going to... I'm going to... Um, read the footnotes to you out of the Amplified Translation today as well. All right, so let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you so much for bringing us back through the weekend, Lord. I thank you, and I pray that everybody had a wonderful weekend. Father, as this is the beginning of the new work week, Lord, I pray that you will refresh us, you will revive us, you will keep us, oh God, that you will anoint us afresh, anoint our minds, Lord, increase our capacity for learning and wisdom, not just the children's, Lord, but Father, anoint us, keep our minds sharp, sound, 
focused and alert, oh God. Father, bless the works of our hands this week. Cause everything we do, say, think, and become. Cause it to be pleasing in your sight. Cause it to prosper, Lord. Father, I pray for our bloodlines, maternal and paternal. And I ask that you would have your way in the lives of our families and friends, Lord. I pray that Holy Spirit would get a hold of everyone and anyone that is not serving you, God. Father, I pray that you will reveal yourself to them in visions and dreams. Speak to them, oh God. Cause them to have divine and Encounters and divine connections, Lord, that somebody will speak a word into their lives, Lord, that will just cause them to want to turn their hearts back to you, Lord. For everybody who's in a backslidden state, Father, we pray that you will get a hold of them and bring them back to you too. Lord, we lift up the children this morning, and Father, we come against the spirit of suicide that has seen to come up in the um, younger generations, Lord. We pray for them, Lord. We come against mental illness. Lord, I pray that you would bring clarity and mental stability and mental soundness to those who are struggling in their mental states this um, this year, Lord God. I don't understand. There's an increase in the mental um mental issues as well, Lord, that we're seeing an increase in them. So Father, we pray that you would minister to them, make them whole, make them complete, make them sound in their mind in their in, in, and in their emotions, Lord. Father, we pray this morning as we go before you and we read your word, Lord, I pray that you would give us wisdom, divine insight, revelation, and understanding into the word that we're reading, cause it to minister to each and every one of us exactly where we are. And Father, we pray this morning, and I say, let there be a fresh anointing upon our lives. Let the angels of the Lord go before us, making easy and successful all of our days and all of our ways. Father, let there be breakthroughs and unexpected blessings in our day today. Father, let every crooked path in our lives be made straight and remain straight. Father, I thank you. Let there be divine alignment, divine connections, and divine compensation in our lives. Father, let there be a spirit of excellence in everything that we do, that we will represent the kingdom of God well. Let our eyesight, insight, and foresight increase and improve daily, both in the natural and in the spirit realm. Let our faith be increased. Let our families and family members be saved. Let our lives be used for your glory. Father, I ask that you will show us your glory and use our lives for your glory in greater measure. Let our health be restored. Let healing be our portion. Let increase be our portion. Let joy fill our lives, our days, our relationships, and our homes. Let your kingdom come and your will be done in our lives. Let there be light. Show us everything that we need to know, Lord God. Let there be multiple streams of income and blessings released in our days and in our lives from this day forward. Let newness fill our lives, new ideas, new strategies, new jobs. Father, let right doors be open for us and to us and the wrong doors closed. Let opportunities chase us down and be presented to us. Oh God, let our names be mentioned in rooms that we know not of for the right reason, Lord God. Father, let people seek us out today. Father, bring us from the back to the front. Father, bring, cause this to be our season of acceleration and advancements, Lord God. Father, let peace fill our hearts, our homes, and our minds. Protect us, oh God. Protect our families. Protect our possess possessions. Father, protect our wood, food, <laughs> our water, and our DNA, oh God. Let us make quantum progress in our purposes our businesses and our finances. Let us recover all that has been lost and stolen from us, O oh God. Let us recover the years that the enemy has stolen. Father, reveal the agenda of everyone and anyone coming into our lives. Expose any wrong and hidden motives in people, in situations, O oh God. Reveal solutions to our problems. Let us experience supernatural financial blessings, breakthroughs, and su success. Let us be thankful for everything that you have done. Let us operate and express an attitude of gratitude each and every day. Father, let us understand the times and the seasons that we will know what we ought to do. Let us understand the purpose that you have for us being alive in 2023. Let victory be our portion. Let us experience victory in every area of our lives. Let our level of wisdom increase daily, cause us to win in every area of our lives. Lord God, let us have x-ray vision to see the hidden things that are going on that we will know how to pray and how to maneuver ourselves and navigate them, oh God. Let youth 
be our portion. Let our youth be renewed and restored like the eagle and let us have a fresh zeal for your word. Now, Father, as I begin to read Daniel chapter eight, I pray that you will reveal your word to us like never before. Father, cause us to have deep revelation, wisdom, and understanding. Help us to connect the dots. Help us to see where we are in 2023 in terms of the book of Revelation, oh God. Father, let us not be deceived by the things that are going on, but let us have clarity. Let us have wisdom. Let us not be... Um, let us not close our minds and our eyes to the things that are going on. But Father, let us hit, deal with them head on and deal with them in prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Let's see if I can move my flowers a little bit away. If this bouquet is big enough that I can give myself a little bit of space. Not so much on Instagram because the view is so tight. Okay, so like I said, we're going to read Daniel chapter 8 this morning. That's our scripture reading for the day. Don't forget on Instagram, please like the video on Facebook. Like and share. Go click the heart and share. And those of you on YouTube, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube my YouTube channel and you can share it as well. All right, we got to get the word of God out. Time is late. People are leaving here each and every day. People are continue to uh, pass away prematurely. We continue to see people just collapsing in the middle of whatever they're doing. You know, I'm, I've heard or read about more athletes in the middle of playing whatever sport it is. They just collapse on the field. I just, I don't, I can't even tell you how many stories I, I read this weekend of people just um, collapsing and exiting the earth prematurely in you know, you know young age. We're not talking about people in their 80s and 90s. We're talking about people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, which is young. All right. So we got to get the word out. We got to get people praying and people back in the word. We got to get people saved, soul saved. All right. So help me as I come on here and do this. I do ask once again that you do like the video, subscribe. I'm still kind of new on YouTube. YouTube's only been up for four months. So I really need those of you that can, if you haven't already subscribed to YouTube. And, um, you know, we want people to start their day with prayer and their day with prayer and the reading of God's word. All right, so let's get into the reading for today, Daniel chapter eight, the Amplified Translation. And the title here is Vision of the Ram and the Goat. All right, and it reads, in the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a second vision appeared to me, Daniel. This was two years after the one that first appeared to me. I looked in the vision and it seemed that I was at the citadel of Susa, the capital of Persia, which is in the province of Elam. And I looked in the vision and I saw myself by the Uli canal. canal. Then I raised my eyes and looked and behold, there in front of the canal stood a lone ram, which is the Medo-Persian Empire which had two horns. The two horns were high, but one, Persia, was higher than the other, Media, and the higher one came up last. I saw the ram, Medo-Persia, charging westward and northward and southward. No beast could stand before him, nor was there anyone who could rescue anything from his power, but he did as he pleased and magnified himself. As I was observing this, behold, a male goat, Greece, was coming from the west, rushing across the face of the whole earth without touching the ground. And the goat had a conspicuous and remarkable horn, Alexander the Great, between his eyes. He came up to the ram that had the two horns, which I had seen standing in front of the canal, and charged at him in the fury of his power and wrath. In my vision, I saw him come close to the ram, which is Medo-Persia, and he was filled with rage toward him. And the goat, which is Greece, struck the ram, Medo-Persia, and shattered his two horns, and the ram had no strength to stand before him. So the goat threw him to the ground and trampled on him, and there was no one who could rescue the ram, Medo-Persia, from his power, from the goat, which is Greece. Then the male goat magnified himself exceedingly, and when he was young and strong, the great horn, Alexander the Great, was suddenly broken, 
and in its place there came up four prominent horns among whom the kingdom was divided, one toward each of the four winds of heaven. See, this is why I like, you see why I like the Amplified? Because it keeps reminding you of who the goat is and who the ram is. Okay, the little horn. Out of one of them, and I forgot, I heard the, pronuncia, the pronunciation of Antiochus. Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes came forth, came forth a rather small horn, but one of irreverent presumption and profane pride, which grew exceedingly powerful toward the south, toward the east, and toward the beautiful land, Israel. And in my vision, this horn grew up to the mo to the host of heaven and caused some of the hosts and some of the stars to fall to the earth, and it trampled on them. Indeed, it magnified itself to be equal with the commander of the host of heaven, and it took away from him the daily sacrifice, burnt offering, and the place of his sanctuary was thrown down, profaned. Because of the transgression of God's people, their irreverence and ungodliness, the host will be given over to the wicked horn along with the regular sacrifice. And righteousness and truth will be flung to the ground and the horn will do as it pleases by divine permission and prosper. Then I heard a holy one, an angel speaking, and another holy one said to the one who was speaking, how much time will be required to complete the vision regarding the regular sacrifice, the transgression that brings horror and the trampling underfoot of both the sanctuary and the host of the people? He said to me, for 2,300 evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary will be cleansed and properly restored. Interpretation of the vision. This is verse 15. When I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I sought to understand it. Then behold, standing before me was one who looked like a man. And I heard the voice of a man between the banks of the Uli, which called out and said, Gabriel, give this man, Daniel, an understanding of the vision. So he came near where I was where I was standing, and when he came, I was frightened and fell face downward. But he said to me, Understand, son of man, that the fulfillment of the vision pertains to events that will occur in the end time. Now, as he, Gabriel, was speaking with me, I drifted into a deep sleep, unconsciousness, with my face to the ground. But he touched me and made me stand where I had stood before. He said, Behold, I am going to let you know what will happen during the final time of the indignation and wrath of God upon the ungodly, for it concerns the appointed time of the end. That's verse 19. The ram's identity. The ram which you saw with the two horns represents the kings of Media and Persia. The goat, verse 21. The shaggy, rough-coated male goat represents the kingdom of Greece, and the great horn between his eyes is the first king. Regarding the shattered horn and the four others that arose in its place, four kingdoms will arise from his, Alexander's, nation, although not with his power and heritage. At the latter period of their reign, when the transgressors transgressors have finished, a king will arise, insolent and skilled in intrigue and cunning. His power will be mighty, but not by his own power. And he will corrupt and destroy in an astonishing manner, and he will prosper and do exactly as he wills. He shall corrupt and, and destroy mighty men and the holy people. And through his shrewdness, he will cause deceit to succeed by his hand, influence. He will magnify himself in his mind. He will corrupt and destroy many who enjoy a false sense of security. He will also stand up and oppose the prince of princes, but he will be broken and that by no human hand, but by the hand of God. The vision of the evenings and the mornings, which has been told to you is true, but keep the vision a secret. For it has to do with many days in the now distant future. Verse 27. And I, Daniel, was exhausted and was sick for several days. Afterward, I got up and continued with the king's business. But I was astonished at the vision and there was no one who could explain it. 
Amen and amen. And that concludes Daniel chapter 8. Now let's go through the footnotes. This is interesting, right? So footnote number one is, is um, Daniel 8 and 1. It says, the events recorded in chapter 8 precede the feast recorded in chapter 5. Now that's interesting, right? That this is not chronological at this point. And when he says in here in, in the first, in the opening verse, it says in the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a second vision appeared. Bel, uh, uh, Belshazzar was the king prior, right? He was back in, let's see, what does it say here? The events recorded in chapter 8 precede the feast recorded in chapter 5. Now, let me see what my notes say about this from last night when I was studying. Let me see if I had anything about that. Because that did come up that it wasn't it wasn't in chronological order that chapter 8, when he's talking about this, it happened earlier. No. I thought I wrote something down about that. But anyway, so thank God for the footnote because it, it just reminds us, it sets the timeline, right? Okay. Then it says, uh, verse 2. This once great city, located about 250 miles east of Babylon, was the winter home of the Persian kings. Let's go see what verse 2 says, though. It says, I looked in the vision, and it seemed that I was at the citadel of Susa, the capital of Persia, which is in the province of Elam. And I looked in the vision, and I saw myself by the, I'm calling this the Ulai Canal. All right, so it says to us, this once great city located about 250 miles east of Babylon was the winter home of the Persian kings and is the ancient site where the code of ha Hammurabi, yeah, was discovered in 1901. Murabai, Hammurabi, yes. All right, Daniel 8 and 8. Let's go see what the verse says. Then the male goat magnified himself exceedingly, and when he was young and strong, and the great horn Alexander was suddenly broken, and in its place there came up four prominent horns, among whom the king was divided. The kingdom was divided. Referring to that is referring to Alexander the Great died suddenly. It died unexpectedly, at the height of his power and his empire was divided into four parts east west north and south and it was ruled over by his four generals okay then we have um verse 10 let's see what 10 says 10 says as and in my vision this horn grew up to the host of heaven and caused some of the host and some of the stars to fall to the earth, and it trampled on them. It says, this horn of verses 9 through 12 is not to be confused with the little horn of chapter 7, verse 8. Near the fulfillment of the prophecy most likely pertains to, the, to Antiochus IV and Epiphanes, who came out of one of the four dynasties into which Alexander's empire was divided and became a great conqueror, ruling from 175 to 164 BC. Hating God, he profaned the temple, persecuted God's people, the Jews, represented in this passage by hosts and stars, and attempted to destroy the Jewish faith. See note 1121. The far fulfillment of the prophecy in verses 23 through 25 most likely pertains to the Antichrist and the period of tribulation found in Revelation 13, chapter 13, verses 4 through 9. Okay, then it has a footnote for verse 11. Indeed, it magnified itself to be equal with the commander of the host of heaven. And it says that is... God. Okay, 8 and 14. He said to me, for 2300 evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary will be cleansed and properly restored. 
And this is the Jewish celebration of the Feast of Lights, which is Hanukkah, in December, commemorates the recapture of Jerusalem by the army of Judas Maccabus and the purification of the sanctuary. Um, what's next here? 21. The shaggy, rough-coated male goat represents the kingdom of Greece and the great horn between his eyes is the first king. And it says Alexander the Great who consolidated the empire. Daniel um, 8 and 22. The four generals who divided the empire established by Alexander were, were Seleucus, 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 the north, Syria, Israel, Mesopotamia, Ptolemy, the south, Egypt, parts of Asia Minor, and Lysimachus, the east, Thras, parts of Asia Minor, and Cassander, the west, Greece, and Macedonia. And then it has verse 23. It says, at the latter period of their reign, when the transgressors have finished, a king will arise, a king will arise, rather, excuse me, insolent and skilled in intrigue and cunning. And it says here, Antiochus IV Epiphanes acquired the throne of Seleucia by murdering his brother, the rightful heir. All right. So that is... Um, all of chapter 8, we read today, Daniel chapter 8 out of the Amplified Translations, out of the Amplified Translation rather, and then I just took you through all of the footnotes. So I happen to, like I said, I really like the Amplified Translation because it gives us um, clarity around all of the players and the representation um, that we see, who was the ram, who was the goat, who were the kings, the kingdoms. So it makes it very clear for us rather than us for me at least, for me trying to rely on my memory and have to memorize this and stick with it, it calls it out for us as we go along. All right, so there's no mistaking um, exactly what's going on. It makes it very clear for us. So I think I will probably stick with the Amplified as we continue to go through this because I think it's, it's important for us to understand exactly what's going on. At least that's the goal for me to really understand what's going on. I really want the book of Revelation, when we get into Revelation, I really want Revelation to make a lot of sense. You know, that's the reason why I've, I've really never made it from beginning to end is because I didn't have clarity around it. And so when you don't have a lot of clarity, um, you know, I would just get halfway through the book and then give up. But this time I want to make it all the way through and have some wisdom and understanding, revelation and knowledge about what it is that we're reading. All right, so you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, for those of you on YouTube, click on my profile picture to subscribe to the channel and then don't be a stranger. Click on the link, it will take you to the next video, the next chapter in the book of Daniel. All right, have a wonderful day everyone. Thank you so much, don't forget. Subscribe to my channel and stick around, watch another video. All right, there's plenty loaded up there for you. They're divided into playlists, so it makes it easy for you to find them. And those of you on Instagram, thank you so much for joining me this morning on Facebook. Don't forget, like and share. Everyone have a wonderful day, and we will be back tomorrow with Daniel chapter 9. All right, awesome. Bye-bye.